Do you want to know more about women empowerment? Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of. Hey, w how's Pod. it going? This is Tracks Momentum with me, Diana, on the Friday edition. Good morning and welcome to W Talk. Right, Women Talk. Welcome Tracks back to FM. W Talk. It's calling you in the studios of Tracks FM. Tune in to W Talk every Fridays from 11:15 to 11:45 a.m. only on Tracks FM. Good morning and welcome to W Talk today. Today is, of course, the th- today is of course the twenty fourth of June two thousand and twenty two. Today we are talking to Dr. Salehatul Huzaimi Huzaima, sorry, Muhammad Ali, who's a veterinarian, and we are talking about healing hands for paws. Amazing topic today. Our producer is Catherine Paul, and we have the lovely doctor in the studio today. Hello and welcome to the studio, doctor. Hi! Thank you so much for having me here today. All right, it's absolute. It's our absolute pleasure. Now, of course, before we let her speak, I just have a small, um, you know, profile about her to talk about. Right? She's a mother of three, and she has thirteen years of veterinarian experience in small animals, such as companion animals, and also exotic cases. She is also known as Doctor. Ima, you might have seen her on Instagram, Twitter, and all of those other social media. She's also a very outspoken veterinarian, actively involved in other activities as a speaker in talks and seminars, apart from educating the public on animal and pet care tips, health, disease prevention, pets, and public health-related issues as well. And of course, her platform is almost every social media out there, right, Doctor? Yeah. All right. And everybody <laughs> knows you as Dr. Ima. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Could you tell us about yourself? And when did you actually realize about your love for animals? Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Um, actually, I've been in um, this field for for 13 years. Mm-hmm. And what uh, triggered me? Mm-hmm. to be in this field to be in this profession is actually um from from I, from small my father is the one that actually doctrine mm-hmm. it's a good word actually doctrine me to be one of um an animal lover uh-huh. because in small he never um he never he always he actually he always um encourage us to touch any kind of animals Mm -hmm. to explore ourselves Mm -hmm. um, in uh, our love for the animals in getting to know these animals especially cats Mm -hmm. but he never um, like push you yeah yeah actually he's he's quite pushy but (laughs) in a good way in a good good way way. Mm -hmm. and um, he also encouraged us to touch dogs even Mm -hmm. which uh, we already know that when we were small, that dogs are something that is a bit um, um, you sensitive. can't touch it. Yeah, yeah sensitive. sensitive. Yeah, that's issue. the word we are going to use today. Sensitive, yeah, sensitive issue mm-hmm. that might trigger some um, backlash. Yeah, true. Absolutely. But, now, but everything mm-hmm. was was great, lah. Everything yeah. was great. So your father was the main, uh, you know, inspiration behind you. Was he a veterinarian as well? No. Uh, so he's a he's a great father. <laughs> he's, a <laughs> he's a great father. <laughs> All right. So, but you can't be a like you could do any other job out there, even knowing that you might not love the job, but you cannot be a vet without loving animals now can yeah. you yeah personally i believe that if you want to be in this field if mm-hmm. you want to be in this profession mm-hmm. um your love towards animals should be very passionate mm-hmm. you have to be very passionate in this field absolutely uh, you can't really uh, pura pura or just pretending uh-huh. you, you will you will the outcome will be different yes okay so um it it, it came out um, what actually triggers me to be in this field is I, I had this cat mm-hmm. named Rentong. It's Rentong. our first cat. Yeah. Rentong. Rentong because it's black. And <laughs> black very shiny, fa- shiny black coat. Wow. Yeah. And I really love him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, every lives will end mm-hmm. in death. So, I feel very frustrated, uh, frustrated when he was sick at the moment. Um, but... We cannot do anything. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this voiceless animal actually needs someone mm-hmm. to be the um, voice voice for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. To be someone who can take care of them. Mm-hmm. Um, to know them well in yeah. terms of their behavior or in terms of how they want to speak mm-hmm. uh, their self. All right. Uh, doctor, and uh, of course, uh, you know, um, your father became the first inspiration for you. But then uh, you could love animals, but not every animal lover becomes a veterinarian. Now, what 
what has been your greatest source of motivation on choosing to become a veterinarian? Um, like I said, my father was uh, was one of the mm-hmm. motivator okay. that that uh, actually um, guide me into this mm-hmm. field. Mm-hmm. Um, so and and it feels like uh, at that time when I was going to be a vet and I actually don't really know this field actually exists. Mm-hmm. So it seems like, okay, if a human have human doctors mm-hmm. for animals, who will be their doctors? Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and, and I realized that at the moment, actually our country, especially Malaysia, we have no, not much awareness um, of this profession. Uh-huh. And I've been... Um, called as oh why do you want to be a doctor haiwan mm-hmm. um doctor ayam and everything you can be a human doctor why why animals so i feel like okay you are um challenging me i think <laughs> uh, yeah because it seems like why animal uh, cannot have doctors yeah um, i cannot be a, an animal doctor so that's what triggers me to be what I am now. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people understand the fragile ecosystem that we live in. Yep. Like humans cannot survive on their own. Yes. Yeah, they don't understand that if we lose bees, we lose a lot of different yes. things. Something as small as a bee, even mosquitoes. Even if you yes. lose mosquitoes from the ecosystem, you lose a lot of things. These are people who are very close to mind space, mm-hmm. right? So they only believe that human, 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 yeah. human, human. That's what we can, we can see nowadays yeah, in I, our I, society. Yeah, I think, I think it's just the arrogance to believe that only humans are living on the planet but they don't understand that without the proper ecosystem if it collapses the first to go would be humans yeah Yeah, like we are the only people out here who pay to eat Mm -mm. animals eat and they don't pay for it true (laughs) absolutely (laughs) and you know I I believe that veterinarians are amazing because uh, for the single thing that like for, like for a doctor, right? We'll take a doctor. You would have the patient telling them, hey, this is how I feel. But not animals. They can't yeah. tell you that, right? Yeah. And it's a veterinarian's job to diagnose them based mm-hmm. upon what they can see and understand. So it's a much tougher job. I'm not, I'm not putting down doctors by any means. Mm-mm. I'm just saying it's a tough job because yeah. you, don't, uh, you, you don't have someone to tell you what's going on. Yes. So how about you? When you were first started off in the veterinary field, was it tough for you? Did you find it tough? Frankly speaking, yes. <clears throat> Frankly speaking, yes, it, it mm-hmm. was tough. And even it is tough. Was when I was study. Uh-huh. Now, um, during uh, my ongoing job, it is very tough. Because of, like, like you said just now, um, our patients can't, can't talk. Mm-hmm. They cannot talk. They cannot uh, tell us which area or which part is in pain. Mm-hmm. They cannot tell us, oh, I'm, I'm having fever or I'm coughing. No, but we need to use all the pancha indra that we have yes okay to identify to recognize to justify or to do the diagnosis Mm -hmm. based on the appearance of the patients the behavior Mm -hmm. the body languages Mm -hmm. so that kind of things actually um uh, what makes us probably special mm-hmm. all right even me i i'm very proud of myself i'm very proud of this profession i'm very f- proud of the veterinarian um, field, field mm. because it's it's yeah it's not easy be- and some more we have multi species patients yes it's absolutely not just, it's not just one species mm-hmm. and we have uh, we have to um cats dogs mm-hmm. um exotic pets birds um even um Cows reptiles. And, yeah, oh. reptiles. We have snakes. We have frogs. Mm-hmm. So we have multi species with different um, symptoms. Yep. Different appearances. Expression, yeah. yeah. Expression of uh, pain. pain. Mm-hmm. And then um, even uh, do uh, if you want to do the treatments, we have lots of medications, mm-hmm. lots of drugs, and each species, even each breed in one species, they have specific. Um, requirement mm-hmm. for uh, for for specific uh, treatment. For example, sometimes one antibiotic, mm-hmm. the dosage it's might different. differ. All right, even in one breed, in, mm-hmm. in one species. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we have to know. Okay, this what antibiotic is not supposed to be given to this species because it can cause death. Mm-hmm. So we have to know everything. <laughs> Your yeah, books have, if, must be you know, really thick. Yeah, even I feel that five years of studies is not enough actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why on the ongoing process during work, during our job, during mm-hmm. now even, um, knowledge is very powerful. So we have to get to know this um, update, 
updates um, of treatment. Sometimes mm-hmm. there are antibiotics that cannot be used mm-hmm. now because of the uh, antibiotic resistance mm-hmm. problem that happens. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very difficult. So we and another one is we need the owner mm-hmm. to help us to do the diagnosis too. Yeah. We need the history. That's why owner cannot bluff. <laughs> if you if you say, oh my dog. Uh, just uh, won't eat like this morning. Mm-hmm. But then on presentation, mm-hmm. the dog is already skinny, just left skin and bone. So how come just this morning, it's not eating? Yeah. So we can... The, bluffing, la man, you're bluffing. So I know. So uh-huh. they're afraid of being called in for animal cruelty. Yeah, yeah. but then we can see already. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> you know what? I, I actually have a very interesting quote that I read the other day. Mm-hmm. Like say, if aliens, right? Aliens, like it's out of the world. But if aliens ever come to the planet Earth and they mm-hmm. get injured, do you mm-hmm. send a doctor? No, you send a veterinarian because <laughs> they are more, uh, uh, you know, capable of identifying other species. Yeah. So yeah, that was something that I read about veterinarians the other day. <laughs> very, very interesting. When you when you think about it, you have so many different medicines out there. Yeah. You have, like, for instance, just looking at the standard dog, right? Mm-hmm. You have the teacup poodle all the way to the size of an Alsatian. Yes. Yeah. And the, the variance is just so big. big and yeah. so what do you actually consider, doctor, when you, when you start treating these animals, you know, sick and injured? What are some of the first things that you consider? consider when you start treating them? One is safety. Safety. It's our safety and also our patient safety. Mm-hmm. Um, um, basically, because we are handling uh, animals, they are very unexpected mm-hmm. and very unpredictable. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you can say, oh, okay, or, okay, you, I think you're good, you're good. But then suddenly when we touch, then just or Ooh. scratch or bite. So yeah. that's are the risk that prop, that the possible risk that we are facing. Because animals always got their defense mechanism yeah, on, right? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Even cats. I think cats have um, a lot of defense mechanism compared to dogs. Yeah. Because dogs basically once we muzzle them, mm-hmm. then we're we feel much much safer mm-hmm. compared to we're handling uh, fractious cats. Yeah, cats mm-hmm. are scary. Yeah, they have all the claws, <laughs> the bites. So basically, I, I, I'm, I'm more, I'm more, um, I have more precaution with cats. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, regarding the what actually um, we are looking into um, the when, when yeah mm-hmm. the animals when we mm-hmm. try to treat. So basically, like I said just now, it's more to. How we learn their behavior, mm-hmm. how we learn their uh, body languages, mm-hmm. then we can approach them. It's mm-hmm. not that we can oh just just serbu saja. No, we cannot. Yeah. Uh, because it, like I said just now, safety. Our safety is the main um, important thing that we have yeah. to. Uh, take it uh, into yeah because mm-hmm. because a bite from a dog or a cat although it sounds simple it's not that simple now yeah, it's is not it? that simple yeah it can so cause the, damage a lot a lot of damage mm-hmm. because I've seen some of their fangs and it's like super deep oh my yes. god but of course there's a lot of history taking that you do before that True. then you prep then only you uh, you know approach the problem and all True, even yeah. even wow that's amazing mm-hmm. so what kind of animals do you actually work with oh, and uh, and you treat and how different is it to actually treat them um. Um, I have been treating uh, lots of animals, not just cats and dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, the exotic pets is quite uh, challenging also mm-hmm. because of there's not much um, history findings, behind them. Yeah, yeah. findings mm-hmm. of uh, even paper or research. Not much have been done or uh, have been found, especially in treating this kind of species. Mm-hmm. Uh, cats and dogs is very uh, are very common. common yeah, They're very common. So when it comes to different species, uh, which is sometimes a bit rare, so it it based on it based on our. Um, Creativity sometimes, mm-hmm. all right, and then um, we have to look into the concept of treatment. So mm-hmm. basically, we will okay put into okay if this kind of species probably I can relate to this family or mm-hmm. group. So then the probably the treatment wise are more or less the same. It's mm-hmm. just that the dosage have to go Very, deeper, yeah, because yeah. of um, there's not much. I mean, in terms of drugs, uh, dosage of the drug sometimes you have to alter a bit mm-hmm. uh, because it's quite different. Uh, from yeah. from from the companion animals. Wow. So, okay, you know what? We'll be touching on those exotic animals in just about a okay. bit because I really want to know about this, uh, those as well. But right now, we're going to be taking a short break and once we come back, there's more to talk about and wow, time flies when I'm talking with you, Doctor. <laughs> right now, this is Britney Spears. You drive me crazy. Yes, animals do drive you crazy at times, but you love them all the same. Hey, 
Hey there, welcome back. Uh, Britney Spears uh, drive me crazy right here on Tracks FM. And uh, today our guest in the studio for W Talk is Dr. Saleh Hartul Khuzaima Muhammad Ali, otherwise also known uh, very, very lovingly as Dr. Ima by all her patients, as well as the patient's handlers, of course. Healing hands for paws, that is the topic that we are approaching today. And we've talked about some of the animals and, uh, you know, how do you, how she diagnoses or sick or injured animals. And uh, you know what, right now, let's talk about, you know, physical size. What is the smallest animal that you've treated, doctor? The smallest? The smallest would be hamster. Hamster? Oh. Yes. Yeah, Mm-mm. very, very hyper people, that yeah. one. And how about the biggest animal that you've treated? The biggest for now is um, dog, large breed dog. Large breed dog. So mm-hmm. we are talking about those big Alsatian type dogs, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> scary, scary, scary. <laughs> no, I mean, me personally, the only animal that I have got a real big problem with is cats. They seem to dislike me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. And also, I'm a bit allergic to them, so I think that kind of translates to them well. Well, anyways, uh, how do you actually gain the trust of those animals when uh, you're treating sick or injured pets? Okay, basically, um, in, in, in gaining their trust, it's actually um, not really simple. Hmm. Um, firstly, we have to ask the owner, is the pet um, okay with other people? Ah. Yeah, it's important. But the, sometimes we cannot also trust the owner. Sometimes, oh yeah, they're okay. They're very nice, very sweet with everyone. But then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah my mother... <laughs> that is why my mother don't trust people because of that. It's okay, he don't buy, he don't buy yeah, one. Yeah. So basically, if he's like, oh, we're still getting my... Oh, okay, all right. So mm-hmm. basically, I will let them... Um, Come near to me first mm-hmm. uh, for uh, especially dogs because mm-hmm. dogs are very expressive and inquisitive. animals. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very expressive. So mm-hmm. basically, I won't force them. It's not that oh, come, come here, bomb, come, come. I help you. No, mm-hmm. uh, basically, I just let them. I just stay, stay still. I probably just come near, mm-hmm. uh, not facing like f- uh, very direct to them or uh, very in front forward lah. Because yeah. sometimes they will feel um, mm-hmm. uh, we would like to. Uh, a f- taba, yeah. yeah, like a fighting mechanism yeah, or right yeah, there. Yeah, so basically, we will just okay, just talk nicely mm-hmm. with a tone, a simple, a small, or what we call it as a soft, a, a loving tone. Yeah, yeah, soft tone. Like you talk to a baby. Yeah, basically, they they aren't they they really understand the tone mm-hmm. instead of the language that they yes, really, yes, yes. we uh, talk to them mm-hmm. so um, once we able to touch them at least we can touch them then it's more easier for us to to treat them mm-hmm. especially when they are in pain sometimes you they're very uh, defensive so sometimes mm-hmm. pain here pain there so sometimes we touch here they, they tend to bite lah. Mm-hmm. So basically we'll we have our method mm-hmm. to um, actually approach them calm so them down yeah we need to calm them down sometimes offer some small upper f- food like treats and yeah, stuff like that so that they feel comfortable mm-hmm. uh, we would like to have them uh, a very nice experience mm-hmm. with uh, the vets it's not that very traumatic yeah. or, or, or something I mean all of us do dislike going to the hospitals yeah. anyway so can the same can be said yes, for animals yes. as well right yes. and I think they've got like a sixth sense right yes. they would know that they're coming to the vet yeah <laughs> sometimes they smell I, I mean sometimes they just go into the car and they know already yeah. Or sometimes the owner asks them to go into the carrier they run already <laughs> they know they know oh, yeah. that's it la. we are going to go see Dr. Ima today yeah. All right. but um, uh, when you treat all, all of these animals right which uh, for you la, personally which is more dangerous you believe like is it dogs or is it cats like we'll just take the common animals hmm. for now I think um, both both of them actually have their own risks yeah their own risk mm-hmm. like um, dogs especially if the unknown dogs um, sometimes uh, stray dogs mm-hmm. if people like newly found them and then bring bring them to the clinic so mm-hmm. sometimes we still have to be really careful with them mm-hmm. um, because we are afraid of rabies diseases oh, yes. that might uh come across mm-hmm. because of our, currently our country is not rabies free ah. so um, so really need to be careful with that mm-hmm. so um, in cats also they can also um, transmit some diseases that is zoonotic for example um, sporotrichosis 
uh, cat scratch disease. So basically, we really have to uh, be careful. No matter what type of animals that we're dealing with, mm-hmm. um, it is important to take care of ourselves first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Always put our you know our uh, our safety, safety first. first yeah. Then only approach the animals yes. to make sure that they are feeling better. Yep. All right. So um, being a wife, your wife, a mum, and a veterinarian can be mm-hmm. quite challenging. You're yep. juggling three roles right there. How do you juggle between this? responsibilities can you tell us about some of your challenges okay um the responsibilities of being a mom a vet and also a wife actually is very juggling mm-hmm. um it's not easy mm-hmm. i tell you it's not easy um but um i'm very grateful because of my family my husband mm-hmm. and my children especially they are very understanding mm-hmm. and actually i am exposing them to what my current job is so uh-huh. basically they know sometimes i i bring them to my clinic sometimes uh if i went to some events mm-hmm. um i really encourage them to at least get to know this type of animals mm-hmm. how you want to approach these animals if they are being harsh i will definitely will scold them lah mm-hmm. i will tell them to know, no no you cannot do this uh, you cannot do that so basically uh, because they're very understanding and i'm trying my best actually to spend my time with them um as much as possible especially during my off days yeah so i have to i have to uh, sometimes i really don't have time i can say that sometimes you're very exhausted i'm very mm-hmm. exhausted sometimes you can be very emotional sometimes with the work and then you have to handle your kids and more okay mm-hmm. so it's very challenging yeah. and work wise mm-hmm. The challenges, the obstacles are very huge, especially me as um, Muslim vets. Mm-hmm. I've been um, facing lots of um, lashes, negative mm-hmm. uh, words and vibes, especially when I'm handling dogs. Yes. Okay. So these are the things that actually I'm going to tell. I'm going to let them aware that vet profession is not limited. We cannot choose our patients mm-hmm. when we are dealing with animals. It means animals. Mm-hmm. Okay, it means pets. It means some um, species that is not um, human, but then they belongs to us. Mm-hmm. They belongs to part of our self, a part of our lives. Mm-hmm. So, this kind of things actually, uh, especially when uh, it's related to why I'm touching dogs. Mm-hmm. Why you Muslim? Why why you don't have any non-Muslim vet to mm-hmm. touch? Girl, something mm-hmm. like that. So I, I said. If the non-Muslim are doing this, you won't feel nothing mm-hmm. because of they have no issues mm-hmm. with this kind of a situation. Mm-hmm. But if a Muslim mm-hmm. touching dogs, mm-hmm. probably they will trigger something. But this is what I want them to know that um, a Muslim still can be a vet, no yes. matter. What religion we are? Yeah, yes. it is a profession. It is. Yes. It is your responsibility, and you have True. to be, you know, responsible to that as well. And yeah. uh, you know what? I'm proud of you for doing that as well. And I'm glad that you're trying to bring awareness. All right. And of course, right now we're going to be taking a short break. We are talking to Dr. Saleh Hatul Husaima Muhammad Ali, who's a veterinarian, a very good one at that. Healing hands for paws. That's the topic for today. We're going to be back right after this one. This is Walking on Sunshine. Be inspired, informed, and up to date. Tune in to Trax Momentum interview feature of the day at 11:15 a.m. Join us as we speak to our panel of guests on various topics. Health on Trax on Monday, Tuesday Spectrum, Wednesday What Matters. Face to face with our guests on Thursdays and on Friday. Tune in to W Talk. Tracks Momentum Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Only on Tracks FM. Walking in sunshine, Katrina and the waves right here on Tracks FM. You are with me, KG, as well as Dr. Ima in the studio today. We are talking about healing hands for paws. Now, Doctor, you would, uh, you spoke that uh, earlier, you spoke earlier about your children mm-hmm. and how you're trying to introduce them to all of this, what you're doing and all that. Are they interested? Do, you wanna be, do they want to become vets as well? Yeah, I can see my son actually is very um, into this field mm-hmm. because I, I think he's very not afraid of like um, small creatures. He can 
touch worms even hmm. I'm also a bit geli kan <laughs> but then he, ibu I want this one can you please uh, jaga him I want to take care of him uh, that's, wow. that's is for Mushu I mean I have a bearded dragon uh-huh. the the food for Mushu right uh-huh. so cakap, uh, ibu I want to jaga this one ibu bagi yang lain lah you don't have to give this one I want this one I cakap, oh my god so uh-huh. so, so nice uh, which, uh, it, it's very tight Touch me a it lot. It takes after your own heart. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that he will be one uh, of my uh, assistants to continue my legacy <laughs> oh, <laughs> in Dr. the future, inshallah. Doctor yeah. Ima 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, could you tell us about your proudest achievement so far? Um, having two clinics is actually my my proudest achievement. Mm-hmm. And then um, this year, I've been awarded uh, to be one uh, to be the uh, top forty. Uh, nominees in the Halal Trip uh, nomination. So it's uh, it is quite uh, honoured mm-hmm. to be one of the uh, one one of the participants. Yeah, that, one yeah. of the nominees mm-hmm. which I I think I I, I I haven't expecting to be in the list. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. But you know what? Congratulations for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So <laughs> All right. And of course, your your legacy, uh, your, I mean, the the achievements is just going to continue coming and coming. I mean, you've been very influential on social media. A lot of people do actually understand more about taking care of their yeah. pets after you've been on social media. Even our very own Green Man is now a very <laughs> big fan of yours. Yes. And uh, as you know, he has a farm and all of those. And uh, how, how about how about some of your, uh, uh, earlier, earlier, your husband actually mentioned this. Like, what, what was the, what would be your worst case that you have actually seen within your own and um, that you treated? Um, actually, I've been I've seen like abusive cases um, mm. when it's related to um, animals, um, especially dogs, right? Mm. And and yes, cats also. Um, we can see like um, there's this man. I mean, this couple actually they look like they really love animals Mm -hmm. but then we find out that actually they love torturing animals they will leave the dogs uh, unattended the dogs sometimes eat their own poop just to survive so um, someone told us that these people actually is very crazy so um, yeah so it's it's kind of uh, it's very heartbreaking Mm -hmm. and um, I'm I'm actually um, teaching my children also to really appreciate lives Mm -hmm. no matter what species of animals even dogs sometimes in our religion sometimes there's limitation Mm -hmm. in um, handling dogs especially but actually it's more to um, understanding and loving animals and life yes you know yes it's more to humanity Mm -hmm. how actually we implement the humanity in our lives Mm -hmm. so um, as we have seen cases of um, dog um, dog, uh, killing Mm -hmm. throwing uh, stones to dogs just because of you don't like dogs Mm -hmm. or probably just because oh dog is haram Mm -hmm. which is I think it's not supposed to happen in our society and that's not human at all yeah no Mm -hmm. yeah even every religion also practicing good Manners, behavior. Yeah. good behavior. It's not that if you don't like that animal, you have to stone it them. or something. Yeah, you have to do do bad to them. If mm. you don't like them, then it's okay. It, yeah. It's not that we're forcing you, but do not harm them. Mm-hmm. So because we have seen a lot of our um, uh, society, especially the even I'm a, I'm a Malay, I'm a Muslim Malay, mm-hmm. but I see lots of abusive cases done by my race mm-hmm. by my reli- uh, religion people i mean mm-hmm. it's 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 quite uh, frustrating and disheartening even, yes yeah even um if we touch dogs there are ways to clean ourselves yes. to purify ourselves especially when we talk about sertu mm-hmm. because there's still lots of people don't understand what sertu is mm-hmm. they will um Confuse it with sama. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about sama? Yes, sama. Okay, I know. that's using good. sand. Yeah, good. yeah. using uh, soil or mm-hmm. clay mm-hmm. to to wash uh, the part that has been touched with the saliva of the dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, um, then we we um, wash uh, our hands or any any part of the body mm-hmm. with six times of clean water. So mm-hmm. it's very easy. But some people thought that it's difficult and restricting other people to touch dogs just because of. 
um, it's difficult to sertu. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after all, my uh, it's like my job. I have been receiving lots of condemn mm-hmm. saying that, oh, doctor, I think you should change your job. You should not be in here. It's haram. Mm. It's haram job. So I, I was like, no, you don't understand. Yes. You don't understand. Even dogs in Islam is um, animal that actually very helpful. Even uh, during our prophet time. Mm-hmm. These dogs actually helps in um, getting food. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So then why do you have to discriminate this animal? Mm-hmm. It's just because of the understanding yes. of certain people, certain group of people. So I'm going to... Create it's not, awareness. Yeah, I'm going to create awareness. If you don't like dogs, it's okay, but don't harm them because these animals are created by God, by Allah, by God. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I think I think that is the overall point that they're forgetting. Yes. Everything True. belongs to God. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, so, Doctor, let's move on from that. What is your future plan? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Me, five years from now. I want to be... <laughs> uh, actually, I, 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 I'm planning to have... Um, um, and a hospital I mean a veterinary hospital wow yeah mm-hmm. but it depends lah alright so and um, what the most important thing is in five years I'm going to be a better person of my version mm-hmm. um, so that I can be um, even more helpful more helpful to mm-hmm. others create more awareness mm-hmm. to our society if I'm, I'm I'm always suspecting that if I'm not here now or in the future but at least our new generation will understand at least yeah they would understand I don't want my children to understand what I understand back then Mm. so I want them to know that this is actually what you have to know this is actually what you have to understand Mm -hmm. humanity absolutely love Mm -hmm. and also care for these animals it's commitment it's not just Pets are not toys. They're not things that you can play with. And then just let go one day. Yeah. You can abuse them. You can't um, dump them. No, you cannot do that. So once you have the commitment of mm-hmm. having pets, it's a lifetime commitment. So Absolutely. you have to um, consider everything. Your time, your money, mm-hmm. your your house. Is it yourself? Is it, are you comfortable with them? Are and you willing to walk them yes. every evening? Yes. The big question. Are you willing to? <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's why I believe never gift your children pets unless True. you truly know that they can yes. do it. It's not that you can gift pet as gift to your uh, children mm-hmm. unless they are really um, responsible and, and you committed. have to teach them to be responsible it's not that oh, okay you just mm-hmm. go on you do what you want no it's you actually have to be responsible to make your children responsible like I know a family right mm-hmm. so they had they recently got a dog and it's the son's responsibility to take care of the dog mm-hmm. and uh, the, the father said one thing whatever the dog doesn't do you can't do so if the dog doesn't eat you don't eat oh. ah, right so that's <laughs> How they, that's how they train responsibility in the kid. Yes. But I, I do believe pet owners become very responsible as they grow up. True. Absolutely. Yeah. So, doctor, final question. What is your advice to anybody who's contemplating to become a veterinarian? Okay. Um. Just go for it. Go for it. <laughs> just go for it. Especially mm-hmm. the uh, Muslim vets. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Muslim um, j- uh, juniors or uh, kids mm-hmm. nowadays, actually, they are very enthusiastic in mm-hmm. this um, uh, the veterinary industry yeah, they, and I believe they're also more open-minded aren't they yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. because previously I have been receiving uh, messages from my followers in Instagram mm-hmm. they, they said that doctor I'm very keen to be in this field but my parents mm-hmm. are restricting me because of dogs and pigs because I have to deal with this kind of animals mm-hmm. but then I said sayang please let your parents understand what veterinarian job is and what our Islam is all about. Mm-hmm. It's um, religion of peace. Mm-hmm. So something, anything that related to peace, mm-hmm. so you you can still actually um, let your parent aware that we you are in the right path. Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderfully said and I loved how you managed to bring two uh, two very contradicting things together yeah. in a way that it's you know understandable. I think people don't understand either completely is the one at fault today. Yep. Well, thank you so much doctor for thank coming today. It's today. been absolutely wonderful talking to you. A lot of eye-opening messages and thank statements. So and uh, today guys, we spoke to Dr. Saleh Hatul who's I'm Muhammad Ali who's a veterinarian, healing hands for pause.